Hi, what's up guys? Today I'll be making a tier list video of the six new Sunder Grand Charms for patch 2.5 for Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you don't know what these Grand Charms are, be sure to read up on those uh, in the most recent patch notes as this explains how they all work. So anyway, about me, I'm Boa. I mainly cover Boas on content on my channel here in YouTube. I've been playing Diablo 2 on and off over the last 20 or so years mainly at launch from Classic and Lord of Destruction, as well as over the last two or three years playing single player and then more recently online. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful, especially as we lead into the new ladder season for 2.5. Be sure to check out some of my videos as well on the channel, mainly covering Boas on content. And as always, if you're a big Boas on fan, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay on top of my videos coming up in the future. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so right in front of you here, guys, we've got the teammaker.com tier list template that I prepared earlier for the Sunder Grand Charms. So I've set up five rows for S going down to A, B, C, and D. I'll then be putting these six Sunder Grand Charms in where I think they, they should sit in relation to each other. So for the six charms, we've got the fire one called Flame Rift, the cold one called Cold Rupture, Lightning, Crack of the Heavens, Poison, Rotting Fissure, Physical, Bone Break, and the Magic one, Black Cleft. So just a crash course, each of these charms offer immune breaking functionality by bringing down the monster resistances all the way to 95% maximum at the cost of you yourself receiving a reduction in that same element's resistances. So for example, the Fire one, if you wear this one, you get minus 70 to minus 90% fire resistances on your character. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, starting with the fire one called Flame Rift. This is going to be useful for fire sorks, fire bolzons, which I've got content for on my YouTube channel, fire druids, and trap assassins using the fire traps. Utility-wise, there's a number of fire immunes in the game, uh, definitely more than enough anyway, and then of those fire immunes in the game, a fair chunk of them are unbreakable as well. So no matter if you have infinity or you're in the pre-infinity stages, this charm is going to be useful for you. Um, but beyond just simply breaking the immunities, what you want to be doing is also capitalizing on uh, basically using this charm. Because monsters are going to be sitting at 95%, you want to find ways to kind of reduce those resistances even further. Uh, so some of the options there will be things like a three-piece tail set, but that's mainly for sorceresses only because the, the mods actually appear on the Tal's orb when the sorceress has equipped, a, equipped at least three of the pieces. One of the other options are sort of more broadly Flickering Flame, which has got minus 15% enemy, enemy fire resistances on it. Um, the only character that it won't benefit for is mainly the Trap Assassin because the traps are regarded as minions and so that doesn't apply to anything other than your character and so because they're classified as minions those mods will only apply to your character and not to your minions uh, so that's going to be the same case for minus enemy lightning resistances as well as minus en enemy fire resistances so both forms of traps won't get those mods uh, so because of that the trap assassin is reliant on having infinity or plague to kind of leverage these charms more properly Plague's not going to be too hard to get, I imagine. Just once you find a cham rune, just create one of those. Uh, I mean, finding a cham is not particularly easy, um, but it's going to be easier than infinity because you have to find two burr runes for that. So um, Beyond infinity and so on, so later on in the stage, you've also got rune words such as Phoenix and Hand of Justice. Um, you're probably not going to be making those before infinity anyway just because infinity packs a larger punch um, again because they're minus enemy fire resistance gear they're not going to benefit trap assassins but it's going to benefit everybody else so a sorceress can use the phoenix shield for example along with the tal's orb to kind of have that uh, dual mod effect and then flickering flame for the helm so you have three pieces of gear that reduce enemy fire resistances so it's going to add up to something quite significant. Um, yeah, so they're the ways that you can capitalize on it. Now, we need to think about the risks of using this charm as well. Uh, for the risks, um, just throughout this um, video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, mainly 
the monsters in the game that have both the immunity that you want to break as well as them having the same kind of element as an attack as well. So we're talking about uh, monsters like council members, venom lords and shamans uh, just throughout sanctuary. So all of them are fire immune but also have a fire attack that they return. So they're the ones that you have to wear the Sunder Charms for, but then you're exposing yourself to that risk of receiving that extra damage from them. Um, for council members, yeah, they're going to be a little bit of a, a threat because those Hydras can spawn in large numbers and fire quite frequently. Other than that, Venom Lords and Shamans and stuff, they're either short range attacks or don't do a lot of damage, so I think that's fine. And then for monsters like Diablo, where he does have a lot of fire attacks, because he spawns by himself, you just simply tuck away the charm into your cube and just not use the charm at all. I think that's just the safest way to do it. Um, on top of that, you want to be supplementing your resistances as well. So stacking more fire resistance, for example, through charms. Uh, Flickering Flame is probably one of the better examples of doing that because it's got like 90% fire resistances on that for not only yourself but for your merc. Uh, Spirit unfortunately doesn't have fire resistances on it as it's got cold, lightning and poison. Um, and as much as you can use another shield to add fire resistances to yourself, you probably want to be using a spirit anyway because it's got um, plus skills and FCR. Other options are things like Rising Sun for the huge absorb and then Oldest Boots for the huge fire resistances. So in summary for this charm, it breaks a number of immunes, especially unbreakable immunes. So no matter if you've got infinity, infinity or not, it's going to be a useful charm for you. Um, for the gear that allows you to take resistances down even further, um, the three piece tail set and Flickering Flame are going to be the main options for you uh, because all of the other gear is going to be fairly expensive um, or at least before Infinity. Um, unfortunately, Trap Assassins don't really fall into that. Um, Plague is probably going to be the most accessible one there. Um, but I guess the point being is that once you get the charm, um, there's a reasonable chance that you're going to have uh, some of the other gear that you can leverage to then take advantage of breaking that immunity. So from that perspective, this charm is pretty good. And the fire attacks from monsters, um, there's a moderate amount of risk there, but I think you've got good amounts of ways to kind of bolster up your resistances again, but also fire attacks, um, they're not the most threatening form of damage in the game, but also not the weakest as well. Um, so moderate amount of risk. Um, so I think all of those things considered, uh, I would put this charm in solid B tier. Um, it's not going to be a huge, huge meta shifting kind of thing, but then also I think it's overall pretty solid for all of the builds. Um, so yeah, I think this is a good spot. Next in the list, we've got the cold sundering grand charm called cold rupture. This is going to be useful for cold sorks. So whether they're using blizzard or frozen orb. Uh, Fro Frost Maiden, so in other words, Bolzons that use the ice skills. I've got videos of her in uh, my YouTube channel, so do check those out. And then also for the Holy Freeze Paladin as well. Uh, utility wise, it's going to be similar to Fire. There's a lot of cold immunes in the game, but the uh, thing with cold in particular is that there's actually more uh, unbreakable cold immunes in the game as well, so you can't break those with Infinity. This charm is going to allow you to break all of those immunes that you could previously couldn't break in the past so it's going to be very very useful uh, in terms of them being able to capitalize on breaking those immunes even further um, cold sorks are going to be very very happy with this charm uh, because she's got the skill called cold mastery that's accessible from level 30 all she needs to do is just pump a few points into there and once she gets her hands on this charm she can farm very very efficiently through um, all of the terror zones and the cold immunes so yeah, it's pretty much just one piece of the puzzle that she needs to get and then she can just uh, hammer all the way through. Uh, for the other builds, um, Frost Maidens, they can get Wizard Draw, which uh, can be found in normal and certainly can be traded for quite cheap as well. Um, whether you find like a string of ears or a pearl rune or something, 
someone might be more than happy to give up the wizard draw for those kind of items. Uh, if you're a Holy Freeze Paladin, maybe something like a Voice of Reason, which is a kind of a cheap rune word to get, uh, can be used to then lower those enemy cold resistances. And then of course you've got your uh, other options such as Infinity and Plague, but they're a little bit more harder to obtain than all of those other options so far. And then later on down the track, then you've got your Ice Rune Word or your Doom Rune Word as well for more of your endgame type uh, options there. In terms of risks, it's going to be... Um, there's not a lot of cold damage sources in the game that uh, in, my, in my opinion are particularly threatening. The only one to be careful of in my opinion is just going to be that um, Frost Nova attack when you kill a cold enchanted monster. Um, but apart from that, most of the cold attacks in the game are either melee range or don't do, deal a huge amount of damage. So not a whole lot to kind of worry about there in my opinion. And then for Bale, um, just like Diablo, just pop the charm into your cube and you don't have to worry about his cold attack too much. Um, and then for resistance stuff, obviously just stack those up. Um, then you've got also options like Raven Frost if you're a melee character like uh, Frost Maiden or Ho Holy Freeze Paladin. And then also Wizard Draw has uh, cold resist on it as well. Uh, so in summary, huge, huge upside, especially if you're a cold sork, and then relatively low risk in terms of the uh, drop in your cold resistances because there's ways to kind of stack it. Uh, I did forget to mention Spirit as well, that's got cold resistances on it as well. And um, yeah, I'm sure many other gears give you uh, cold resistances too. Uh, so high upside, low downside. It's very hard to kind of not put it um, here. Um, I think it's definitely more than solid. It's, it's probably an equalizer uh, from the perspective of, yep, maybe it's not going to be your end game GG build, um, like for the cold sork anyway, specifically speaking about her. Um, maybe she's not gonna, you know, be stronger than a Hammondon or a Lightning Sork in the long run. But if we're talking about time windows in the in the ladder progression, she can um, take off with an early advantage and get to 99 sooner, or be able to farm those gears quicker to then give that gear to her Hammondon or her Lightning Sork. So there's certainly opens up a lot more options there, and the the cold sorceress is going to play a much larger role in the ladder season. So that's why I put it there. Okay, the next charm on the list, we've got the Lightning Thunder Grand Charm called Crack of the Heavens. Lovely name. Uh, this is going to be useful for Lightning Sorks, uh, Nova Sorks, Javazon, Spirazons, Tesladons, and Trap Assassins. Uh, Utility-wise, there's just as many Lightning Immunes as there are Cold and Fire, except with Lightning Immunes, they can be broken with th something like Conviction fairly easily. Uh, so this Thundering Grand Charm is primarily going to be for uh, pre-Infinity stages of the ladder grind. Uh, once you do get your Infinity, then it just becomes a matter of choice. Like you can use it if you wish or don't wish if you wanted to. Um, it's going to be dependent on your build, but also where you farm as well. Uh, I'll cover one example of this a little bit later on. Um, for now, in terms of being able to capitalize on this charm, around the pre-infinity stages. Um, so you've got Pres Crescent Moon as a kind of a budget option, as well as a four-piece tail set as well. Uh, these are gonna be mainly for your Sorceress, uh, but the Tesladen can also use the Crescent Moon as well. For Javazons and Spirazons, uh, they don't have too many options apart from just using Thunderstrokes, um, as all of the other weapons so far, uh, they, they, they're not compatible with Javelins and Spears. Uh, for Trap Assassins, she doesn't really have much until she can get her hands on either an Infinity or Plague, as the traps don't really work with that minus enemy lightning resistances. And then of course, of course there's Griffins as well, uh, sort of around the in Infinity kind of rarity level, um, but that's going to be fairly useful like across the board, again except for the Trap Assassins. Um, and then there are Facets and stuff as well, uh, I kind of forgot to mention that a little bit earlier. Um, Risks wise, uh, obviously Gloams are the big one. They do a lot of damage and have a huge amount of range. Uh, to a lesser extent, uh, you've also got the Lightning Enchanted mobs, both the Beetles and then also the Lightning Enchanted Unique monsters as well. 
Uh, for Diablo and Mephisto, you can just simply unequip the charm and then just kill them as normal, so that's not an issue there. Uh, but even with Gloams and stuff, uh, and having 75% lightning resistances on your character, they still do a lot of damage to you anyway. So having maximum lightning resistances is kind of like a, a core requirement almost in approaching Gloams. And then with this charm in your inventory, it's going to be infinitely a lot harder to get um, maximum lightning res on your character. Uh, so in essence, this one's a fairly, uh, like a double-edged sword. Um, yeah, let's put it that way. It's a double-edged sword. Um, it's going to be a, somewhat of a high reward in the sense that you do break those immunities of those particularly dangerous monsters, but then at the same time, uh, they are dangerous and they're going to kill you a lot quicker. Um, but there are ways to kind of stack resistances to kind of help your survivability a bit. Uh, obviously, resistant ch uh, charms, spirit, uh, Vap Viper Magi, if, if you can afford to not use an Enigma on your character. Uh, high lords and then there's stuff like crown of ages if if you don't want to use something like a griffins and want to use that instead um, if you're a sorceress you can actually use energy shield along with uh, plus lightning skillers or plus lightning skill gear uh, to kind of bolster up both your energy shield as well as your lightning skill attacks so that's pretty convenient um, so yeah in summary yeah as i said it's a double-edged sword in that way um, but in terms of whether you want to use this uh, post-infinity as well, uh, so I'll give you an example where you might not want to do that. So in Chaos Sanctuary, you've got Venom Lords and then Finger Mages. Those Finger Mages are immune to lightning but have a low hit point count. Venom Lords have a high resistances to lightning, not immune, but have a high hit point count as well. Uh, if you just use Conviction and a whole bunch of minus light res gear, you can kill them just as quickly as each other, but then if you use a Sundering Grand Charm along that and have Infinity work at uh, full effectiveness, then you're actually over-optimizing for uh, killing the Finger Mages, and in actual fact, you're not really clearing the map at, uh, any quicker than if you were to just not use the Sundering Grand Charm. Uh, so just keep that in mind and, and just kind of be a bit strategic in how you use this charm, but it's gonna be fairly situational. Uh, so on that basis, I will put this one over here. Um, the use case for this one is a little bit iffy. It's not as straightforward as, it's, as it may seem. Uh, it's going to be beneficial more for your lightning source than for your other characters. So that's why I'll put it here. All right, the next one we've got here is the Poison Sunder Grand Charm called Rotting Fissure. This is going to be useful for Poison Necros, Plague Javazons, and Rabies Droids. Utility-wise, there's not as many... Uh, poison immunes in the game as there are cold fire and lightning immunes and even then those immunes can be broken relatively easily with low resist curse. Uh, the other thing as well is those three builds just mentioned they do have an alternate damage type available to them so for example Plague Javazon can use lightning bolt or spec into charge strike without too much trouble but if you wanted to use this charm anyway and you can then there are certainly options available um, both early, earlier on and later on as well. Necromancers can use lower resist curse right out of the gate at level 30, so he's going to be able to take advantage of this charm straight away. Apart from that, uh, budget gear options, he can use the three-piece Trang set, which the shield has minus 25% enemy poison resist on it. For later on, there's also Death's Web Wand, which the Necromancer can main as his primary weapon. For Javazons, she's got um, Death's Web, uh, that, but she can only use that on Switch as she'll need to use a, jav a Javelin as a primary. Uh, but Death's Web uh, on Switch, she can use the Javelin first to throw the Plague Javelin, then switch to Death's Web fairly quickly, and then those monsters will then suffer that minus resistance while the clouds start to form around them. Um, it does take a little bit more fiddling around with gear to make that happen though. So if you're using a call to arms, for example, on switch, you kind of have to put that into your cube or put it into your switch, cast BO, and then put it back into your cube and then put Death's Web on switch. For Rabies Druids, uh, they can use Plague uh, as a main weapon, not only for the lowest is Curse proc, but also for... Uh, the minus enemy poison resist that's on it. Uh, all of the builds can use facets, of course, and then Plague Javazons can use um, the Plague Rude Word on 
on the mercenary, whether it's a dual wield or single wield Act 5 mercenary. Uh, so those are the options that are there. Uh, in terms of risks, poison damage from monsters, uh, or really poison damage in general, is a low risk damage type in the game, as it's something that can be uh, fairly rectified quickly with something like an antidote potion. So you just, when you're poisoned, just pop the potion, you're no longer poisoned. Uh, otherwise, you can try to counteract it with, with just normal potions, or in a worst case, going back to town. Uh, there are also options with the Plague Rune word where it's got that cleansing aura and it si significantly reduces the length of the poison duration on that poison. So there are plenty of ways to kind of mitigate that risk and basically get rid of it entirely. Uh, so in summary, I would say that this one is going to be beneficial mainly for Necros, but the other builds can benefit from this one as well. While it and then all the while it does carry um, a lot less risks uh, from a re resistance reduction point of view um, by having this in your inventory. So all of that considered, I'll probably put this one just slightly above the lightning one here just because it's got that utility but it's a lot less risky to use this charm. So yeah. Okay, the next charm we've got is the physical Sunderground charm called Bone Break. This is going to be useful for your melee builds, so Barbarians, Druids, Zealots, uh, Strafe and Multishot Bolzons. So I've got Multishot Bolzons in my YouTube channel, so come check those out when you can. And then also summon Necros and summon Druids as well. Uh, in terms of the utility of this charm, there's not a lot of physical immune monsters in the game, and even those that already do exist, they can be broken by Decrepify and Amplify damage already anyway. And lastly, the other thing to consider is that most of the melee builds already do have some kind of alternate damage type as well. So for example, Barbarians have uh, Berserk and Bolzons have Magic Arrow. So in terms of utility, uh, it's, it's not going to be game changing because there's already options out there before these charms came along. Um, but then if you wanted to sort of capitalize on this charm, if you did want to use it, um, there's actually not a lot of options because unlike Fire, Cold, Lightning and Poison, uh, there's no physical facet charms to kind of reduce enemy physical resistances and there's no other gear in the game that also reduces enemy physical resistances as well. So the only way that you can reduce resistances of uh, physical on monsters is by using Amplify Damage or Decaprify. Necromancers are fine because they can just instantly cast a curse, no problem. They can take advantage of the charm straight away. Uh, but for uh, other builds, they have to use a chance to cast proc. So it could be a chance to cast on striking or when struck. Um, and then so because you have to kind of rely on that mechanic, it's going to take a few seconds for that uh, curse to apply to the monsters. And even then, it might might not apply to all of the monsters anyway. So given that you have to kind of wait around for that curse to apply, well, it sort of raises a question, should I just wait for that curse and, and use this charm? Or should I just simply use Berserk or Magic Arrow or the tools that I've already got in my disposal to be able to take out those physical immunes? Um, so in terms of the overall benefit, it's really not that great. Um, and then if we look on the other side in terms of the risks, well, physical, um, you're kind of having a reduction of 10 to 30% physical resistances on your character. And given that physical is firstly the most common damage type in the game that you'll receive, um, it's also a damage type that can stack up fairly quickly, um, especially if you're fighting mobs that are extra strong uh, and then they've also got aura enchanted, say, might and fanaticism. Um, that can stack thousands of damage fairly quickly. So if you're a barbarian getting to the thick of things, receiving an extra 10 to 30% damage is really not going to be ideal, um, just for the sake of being able to handle physical immunes slightly better. Uh, and then likewise with Bolzon as well, she's already got low amounts of health. Do you really want to sacrifice her survivability even more? Um, so those are the sort of things that you got to think about for the physical one. And in my opinion, opinion, uh, I think the calculus is really just not there to kind of use this one effectively. Um, 
Having said that, there are some niche kind of scenarios where it can be handy. So uh, if you're a throw bub using lacerator, you can proc that amp damage fairly reliably. Or if you're using a fury druid with reaper's toll, then you can cast a crepify fairly quickly with, with uh, fury. So they're probably the two only scenarios where I would use this charm. That or in a in a team setting where you've got a barbarian that's got grim ward you can just lay it down in say arcane sanctuary for example and then the ghost kind of gets scared off and then a bolson with a sundergrand charm using multi-shot can just simply blow them away but uh, that's a very very niche sort of scenario because it requires a team to kind of do that uh, so more than one character so i guess overall given that it's a very sort of niche kind of thing i would definitely put it in the iffy pile um, and probably after all of these ones as well because it's very very niche but it's also a very very risky charm to use because you do really sustain extra damage with this one and you, there's no way to kind of supplement uh, those resistances fairly well without sacrificing DPS so um, yeah that's where I think it should go and the last underground charm in the list here is for the magic element and it's called black cleft this is going to be useful for Bone Necros and Hammerdons only and even then I use the term fairly loosely here as in my opinion this charm is totally useless um, and the reason why I say that is uh, yes you can technically break the immunes but because there's literally no options in the game to re further reduce magic resistances on monsters the monsters are still going to be stuck at 95% and it's still going to take in all practical terms forever to kill those uh, magic immune monsters anyway. Uh, so my recommendation would be really to just skip those monsters, uh, continue to farm the non-magic immune monsters and then uh, save an exit, create another game and just continue to farm. Otherwise you're going to be sacrificing your farming efficiency if you attempt to kill magic immunes with bone necros or hammerdons. Um, and then I don't even know if it's even worth sort of going into this but yeah the risks of using a charm like this is you lose 45 to 65 percent magic resistances while using this charm as well um, and there's no other way to kind of supplement your magic resistances other than uh, crafting a safety shield which uh, gives you magic resistances and even then nowhere near enough to kind of make up for that um, downfall um, in terms of the monsters that actually deal magic damage, I don't think they're too common. And of the ones that deal magic damage, there's only one in the game that is also magic immune themselves. So uh, in terms of being able to break the immunity and then receiving extra magic damage in return, um, it's the greater mummies in Act 2 are going to be the main culprit for that. Um, but I mean, really, even then... Uh, what I would suggest is just simply not use the charm at all. Kill all of the surrounding skeletons around the greater mummy and then just moving on. Uh, so yeah, pretty much uh, it's got all of the risk and none of the benefits. And yeah, as I said, just quite frankly useless. So this is a very easy kind of D tier or slash useless uh, slot in here. Um, it doesn't even make it into the ifies, let alone your solids or uh, any of the upper sort of tiers in this list here. Okay, so that's all of the charms now. So just to quickly cap off, we've got the cold one up here. This is mainly for the cold sorks who can take advantage of this both very early on and quite significantly uh, during the ladder grind. Then we've got the fire sundering grand charm here. This is going to benefit a lot of those fire builds out there. There's uh, flickering flame to kind of bolster up your resistances single-handedly to make up for it. But also um, there's plenty of options there to reduce your enemy fire resistances down even further, both pre and post infinity stages. Then we've got the poison one down here. This is more mainly um, for your poison necros who've got lower resistances out of the box as well as being able to use death web. Uh, to a lesser extent, um, plague javazons, um, they've got more limited options other than just using a plague rune word to use this one. But then at the same time, it's a low risk uh, sundering grand charm to use, so that's why it's on the top end of C. Then we've got the lightning one here, bit of a double edged sword, and in terms of being useful post infinity, uh, I think it's highly debatable. 
Uh, I hope I tried, I explained that reasonably well. Um, but yeah, basically you need to kind of decide whether you want to continue to use this once you do get infinity. Then this one as well, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword again, um, mainly useful for a small subset of physical builds, um, but definitely not the vast majority as you do really sustain that extra damage. But then it's also um, taking a spot for like a max damage attack rating grand charm, for example, as well. And then this one down here, just useless. Uh, forget about this one. Don't bother thinking about it anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the list there. Uh, so thanks guys for sticking around this this far into the video. Uh, I hope you kind of got something out of what I said. Even if you sort of agree or disagree with pretty much every, everything I said or the overall uh, sort of assessment of these charms or just some aspects of what I've mentioned, um, I hope you kind of appreciate where I'm coming from in thinking about um, things like the, the utility and the prevalence of the immunes out there. Um, what item options you, you can use to maximize these charms and um, also the risks and the ways to mitigate those risks. Uh, I hope these are things that you start to think about on your own as you start to look at these charms for yourself, but I hope um, I've given you a good start on that. Uh, if you've got any comments about anything that I've said at all, like maybe I've forgotten something um, that, I, that I should have mentioned in this video, please sound off in the comments and uh, just mention that and be more than happy to respond to you guys. Uh, so apart from that, if you like the video, then do hit the, the like button. Even if you dislike the video, just hit the like button anyway, because uh, I think whether you agree or disagree or not, I still hope that I've provided some information that's valuable to you guys. And so um, unless you truly, truly dislike the video, um, then just basically close the window. That's fine. Just get out of here, whatever. Um, so apart from that, though, for your Bowls on fans out there, um, once again, I'm Boa. Uh, and I mainly do bowls on videos. So if you're a bowls on fan, do hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, in YouTube so you can stay up to date on my videos. Um, you can also have a look at my past videos as well. I've got quite a few there, um, both in terms of um, testing out a whole bunch of builds as well as uh, just sort of going into some specific concepts in some videos and that as well. Um, hopefully later on in the future I get to do actual more gameplay type stuff um, so like challenges and on item finding challenges or gameplay challenges things like that I want to try to make things a bit more exciting in the future um, apart from that as well I do want to mention that I've got a discord server coming up as well so I'll sort of be announcing that in a time short time to come hopefully and also um, just to kind of wrap things up really uh, for those watching uh, this video, I really do hope that you do well in this upcoming ladder season if you're um, participating in that, so ladder 2.5. Uh, for me personally, I'm not join joining in on the ladder. I just purely wanted to make this video just to pro provide some value, value for you guys. Uh, I might join in on the third ladder season, uh, most likely going to be 2.6. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure yet, but definitely won't be joining in in this one. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, once again, thanks for sticking around this long. Do like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye.